Welcome to our prayer service at Pilgrim Church in Harwichport. I'm Susan Cartmel. In the middle of each week, these prayer services are our gift to you. We hope they offer you a pause that refreshes and a chance to lay your burdens down. This service airs Wednesday at 6 p.m. on Facebook, on YouTube, and on our website, pcchp.org. For the next six weeks, I'll be speaking about the 23rd Psalm. If you'd like to get a packet of Lenten resources or just a copy of the Psalm, send me an email at revsusan at pcchp.org. The book I'm using for this series is about the healing wisdom of the 23rd Psalm, and it is written by Rabbi Harold Kushner. Our Sunday service is at 10. Of course, you can watch either service anytime that fits your schedule. You can help us reach others by pushing the share button on your Facebook page when the service pops up. There's a special quiet that descends upon the earth after snowfall. And today, much of our country is enveloped in snow and a certain kind of solitude that comes with it. I hope that the quiet of the snow this winter can offer you some rest for your soul, an opportunity to be still and to hear the voice at the heart of all that is. I hope that this winter storm brings with it an invitation from God. Now, won't you join me as together we bow our hearts in prayer. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. Fill us, use us, mold us, transform us. When we pray, we come with our many lists of ideas and concerns and worries. We pray for those who feel challenged today. We pray for strength for those who are taxed or tired. We pray for patience for those who feel depleted. We ask that you give hope to those who are so weary, it's hard to look ahead. Bring new perspective to those who are fearful and overwhelmed. We come before you in this moment seeking a deeper spiritual connection too. Help us to know that you know us as we are, that you see how hard we try, that you know how much we do, that you understand how disappointing some of our relationships can be or how lost we sometimes feel. Come to us in new ways this day. Fill that emptiness in us that only you can understand. Give us the clear sense that we are on this journey of life together. And so surround us with your love. We pray all this in Christ's name, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Today is Ash Wednesday. It starts the season of Lent. Now, some folks believe that Lent is a time to give up things you enjoy, like chocolate or red meat, as an act of contrition. Though we observe Ash Wednesday in our church here at Pilgrim Church most years, this year we won't be offering the imposition of ashes because in the United Church of Christ, we don't believe that it's safe to meet, to worship in person. But sadly too, after a year of pandemic restrictions, it's almost as if we've been living through a kind of Lenten experience for 12 months. So this year, I wanna offer another way to look at Lent. It comes from my friend and colleague, Reverend Eileen Morris, who serves the Slatersville, Rhode Island, UCC Church. She says, Lent is a time to learn and explore new things. L for learn, E for explore, N for new, and T for things, Lent. It changes Lent from a time of penitence to a time of exploration. So let's reframe Ash Wednesday as the first day of a spirit, I mean, of a period of awakening, of learning new things, of stretching our wings and thinking carefully about the world we want to return to and the world we want to create when this pandemic is over. A world informed by where we've been and what we've been through. A world informed by all that God has taught us on this journey. So I'm gonna read part of John O'Donohue's A Blessing of Angels. May the angels in their beauty bless you. May they turn toward you streams of blessings. May the angel of awakening stir your heart to come alive to the eternal within you, to all the invitations that quietly surround you. And may the angel of healing turn your wounds into sources of refreshment. All through this season of Lent, I will be talking about the 23rd Psalm, line by line. Last week, we looked at the first line, the Lord is my shepherd. If you missed that, you can replay the service from February 10th to hear it. And today, we'll be talking about the line that says, I shall not want. Now this line makes it sound like you're not supposed to want anything. The problem with the the problem with that is a translation problem. Long ago the word want meant lack. In fact, the psalm means if God is my shepherd, I lack 
for nothing. Rabbi Harold Krishner wrote a book about the 23rd Psalm in which he says this line refers to the way the Israelites felt when they journeyed through the wilderness with Moses. They just had the clothes on their back, but God took care of them. They ran through their food pretty quickly, but God sent manna, an edible moss, every morning. And Moses found springs of water for them. So the psalm says that God will always supply our needs. But I think it's important to remember that we do want things. It's normal to want good things. It's normal to be attracted to beauty. It's normal to hope things will get better in our world. We are created by God to desire things. Rabbi Kushner says, I believe God has planted in every one of us the desire for more and the reluctance to settle for what we have and what we are. There's a part of me, he writes, that insists on loving people, though I know it makes me vulnerable to the pain of loss. There's a part of me that yearns for a better world, a world without war or fraud or violence. I get what Rabbi Kushner's saying, and I share his desire to reach out to people and to want the world to be just and peaceful, even though I'm often hurt or frustrated by these desires. Rabbi Kushner goes on to say, if there are empty spaces in your life, dreams that never come true, people who were once there but are gone now, the purpose of those empty places, those spaces, is not to frustrate you or brand you as a loser. The empty spaces may be there to give you room to grow, to dream. They may be there to teach you to appreciate what you have, because it might not have been there yesterday, and it might be gone tomorrow. Here's another way to see Psalm 23 and to hear it. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall often want. I shall yearn. I shall long. I shall aspire. I shall continue to miss the people and the abilities that are taken from my life as loved ones die and skills diminish. I shall probe the empty spaces in my life like a tongue probing the empty space where a tooth is missing. But I shall never feel deprived or diminished if I don't get what I yearn for because I know how blessed I am by what I have.
The scripture lesson is Psalm 23. Won't you join me? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. May you come to know and trust that you are exactly where you are meant to be today. Never forget the infinite possibilities born of faith. Pass on the love that's been given to you and rest in the hollow of God's hand. Amen.